Two-way tables are something that we've met before. Two-way tables, we've encountered these actually all the way since like uh, year eight and year nine, to be honest. Um, so these are not new things, but we're gonna do a few different things today with them. Number one, well, we just wanna refresh our memory. What are these? Why are they useful? Um, I'm gonna introduce a bit of like finer technical language around it that we didn't really need to talk about before. Um, and then, I'm actually super excited about this because I put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I'm gonna show you how important they are, despite how like ordinary looking they seem to be, I want to show you how important they are for seeing through um, people trying to trick you. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, these tables are called two-way tables because we're going to be comparing two different forms of data on this table. Um, you can see at the moment I've got these four numbers in here, two this way, two that way. But a two-way table can be much larger, um, and you'll see examples of this later on. Um, so long as you're comparing one thing against another, it's, it's two-dimensional. That's what we mean by a two-way table. Now you might be able to guess the M and the F in this particular table, when you're thinking about ways to break up a population, what do you reckon they stand for? Male and female, good guess. Of course, they didn't have to, but this is just what the data that I got was. And this is male and female drivers that are being compared for when they get you know, random breath testing and that kind of thing. Okay? So what we're having a look at here is the breakdown of male and female drivers on a random breath test. We're looking at their blood alcohol content. Right? And does anyone know what is the, have you done the test, did you pass? What is the particular blood alcohol concentration that's most important when you go through a breathalyzer? 0.005. 0. Say it again. It's 0 0.05. Okay. So what we've got here, pretty close, like 10 times, uh, what's... Uh, right, that's exactly, well, this is, this is some old data. So 0 0.05 used to be the important number, okay? So we've got two groups of people. Um, the top one, as you would hope, because it's smaller, these are the people who are breathalyzed and they're over the limit. So we're just going to mark that as greater than 0 0.05. Um, and then these guys down here, actually I should say that's greater than or um, equal to. Um, these guys here underneath this much larger group are the ones who are below that limit. So these are, these are the safe ones. Okay, blood alcohol concentration. Now, a two-way table is useful because you can take these numbers and we call these, by the way, here's the first bit of extra sort of technical language here. Um, we call these guys a conditional distribution. These four numbers are a conditional distribution. Because they show us the frequency, as the name suggests, based on particular conditions. Show me the frequency if it's only the female drivers I'm interested in. Show me the frequencies if it's only the ones over the limit that I'm interested in. Okay, so we call each of these conditional distributions. What you can get from these is these things on the edges, because they're on the edges, we call them marginal distributions because they're on the edges. Um, it's these totals here that I'm interested in. Now, like I said, we've seen this before. Can I ask you, let's get a total for the number of male drivers who were tested, the number of female drivers, uh, the number of drivers, male or female, who are over the limit and the ones who are under. Grab your calculator out, punch the numbers in, I'll give you um, a minute or so to get the calculations done. Um, can someone tell me the number of drivers who were over the limit in total? That's an easy one. 33. We could just do that one. We didn't need a calculator for that. Um, what was the total below the limit? 1,705. 1, okay, excellent. Um, male drivers? 988. Thank you. Um, female drivers, Zaki, have you got? 750, exactly. Okay, great. Now, when we come to this final one here, right? Um, we got these numbers by adding vertically. We got these numbers by adding horizontally. We get this number how? What are we adding to get the entire group? Sorry. Uh, that side, the total on that side, and that side should equal. Uh, these two here, yeah. if we add them up, they should be equal to these two here, right? So importantly, you don't add, add up all four. You just choose your column or choose your row. What is the total, by the way? One, seven, three, eight. Fantastic. Okay. 
So we've got our total total. Now the question that I'm interested and you might be able to see based on the questions I'm asking here. The question I'm interested in is can we make, can we draw any conclusions about the relative safety or risk taking behavior uh, of males and females in this driver population. So the first question we might ask is well what percentage of the drivers who were actually random breath tested what percentage were female? Now, I'm not interested so much in the number, we'll get to that in a second, but which of the numbers are we comparing? To get the total proportion of females, which two numbers will we divide by? Sophie, what do you say? Oh, as in, oh, I was just thinking like percentage-wise, like to actually work it out. Okay, well, we'll get to, we will all get to that, but which numbers will you, what will you divide by what to get that? The total of females over the total in general. Okay, so it's the total female number, and then this is the general population, yeah? Do we agree? With that? Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that's 750 over 1738. Um, that's a really gross denominator, so I expect we're going to get some weird decimals. We want a percentage. Can I get one decimal place? Say it again. Uh, yeah, if you, divide, if you multiply by 100%, you'll get a percentage out of that. So someone got a number for me. 4.3? 4. 4.3%? 4. Uh, 4. That, that seems, my, my spider sense is tingling. It feels like it should be more like 40. 42.9? Yeah, I guess it's 0.2. Did we round that right? Okay, okay, someone's doing something wrong. Which one is it? Okay, we're revising. 43.2, the one five, the five rounds up, yeah? 43.2? We got there in the end. Okay, I was like, yeah, no, this, this definitely doesn't look like 4%. Okay, how many times? That's good. The next question I want to ask is, um, of the general population, considering male and female drivers alike, what proportion of them have a blood alcohol concentration above the limit? Again, I'm less interested in the actual number. I'm more interested in which numbers are we comparing. 33? That's the one that's over, right? Over... Is it the total or is it the total people who... Are Good question. Right, which, which two numbers are we comparing? We, I think we all agree it's going to be this one because I'm not interested in male or female. So it's going to be these combined. What do I divide by? Do, do we reckon it's this number down here? How many have gone over? Just yeah, just, just completely flat. It's how many have gone over of our total population. So it's going to be that 33 over, again, the entire group. Yeah? 1738. That's a very messy 8. Okay, this will be a considerably smaller proportion. I hope um, someone calculated the percentage. 1.9? 1. 1.9%. 1. 1. That's to one decimal place. Okay, now I'm going to pause for a second and this for this next bit, rather than tell you what I'm going to ask, I'm going to let you think about, we have many different numbers we can compare here, and what we're interested in is, can we make some kind of conclusion? Is there a conclusion to draw that's interesting, um, about the difference between the male and the female populations within this, okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you what question to ask or what to divide. I'm going to give you a few minutes to maybe chat with the person beside you and work out what would you divide by what and then what conclusions could you possibly draw. So let me give you two or three minutes, then we'll come back together. If you think you have a finding and how you got it, call me over. Okay? The question is, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of, this is the general population, everyone, that we breathalyzed. I want to see if there's any significant difference here between the males and the females within this population. Is there any difference between them? Can I get that out of this data? Okay. Now the reason I'm not telling you what question to answer is because actually when it comes to data, this is the real work. Like when I tell you what to divide by what, there's no there's very little brain activity happening. You don't have to make any judgments or justify any decisions. But in the real world, you get the data and you decide what questions to ask. So have a think. Like I said, two or three minutes. If you have a finding, let me know. I'm interested, and I'm, I'm already giving you a bit of a clue, telling you there's a couple of numbers here that I think are going to be valuable to us. I'm interested in what your theories were for what further calculations we could make here that might yield inside. Does anyone want to theorize? Any suggestions? Any takers? Go ahead, Zaki. Well, Moe and I thought it would be important to compare the population of men and women respectively that went over in comparison to the rest of their general populations. That was a very long and pregnant sentence. Let me see if I got it right. I think, I think these are the numbers you're talking about. Um, you're interested in the number of people 
in the male and female populations respectively who went over the limit within their population. Did I, did I get that right? It's, it's two separate numbers that we're deriving. I just, just spoke in the Good. Okay. Um, did you have a different suggestion, Shane Barbie, or more on this? I that it had to be in, like, in, like, the, like, that first one. <coughs> like, it has to be greater than 0.5. I mean, less than 0.5. Oh, does it include both? So, sorry, is your question about, am I including just this group or both groups? Is that what your question is? Yeah. Okay. Like over the total. Ah, so, so Zach is comparing these two numbers with these two numbers, is that right? Yeah. That's what we're Did anyone think that we shouldn't compare those sets of numbers? What do you think, Sophie? I don't know, well I feel like it's a bit of a random variable, like what does it attribute to the actual information that's been displayed there? Like, mm. That number of like how many people were interviewed <laughs> as like a total population is kind of irrelevant. Yep. Oh, yep. These numbers are here. Okay. All right. Sorry, no. This is really mean. Oh, no. <laughs> now it's now it's personal, Sophie. Now it's. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's run with Zaki's suggestion and see where it takes us. Has anyone actually already worked these out? Anyone? Anyone else? Okay. Max, which one did you work out? If if you've or have you worked out both already? Tell us one of them. Which one? Shh. Say that again. Which one are you looking at? Okay. So can we write this down? So what would we call this group? This is the male drivers with a blood alcohol concentration that was exceeding, yeah, or or equal to. Okay. So this was what did we say? Two. Uh, Two point six percent to one decimal place. Okay. Now the first thing I notice before I even go anywhere is I can compare this immediately to the previous number, right? So this is the general population, and this is saying to us, and you can even see this number is very close to a thousand, right? So you could have estimated that that would be about two point six. Um, this number is already above the general population. Can we cross-check that with the female equivalent? Uh, Zach, I think you said you got this number already. What did you get? Zero point. Nine. Zero point. Nine. Zero point nine, which is almost it's almost a third of this number here, isn't it? So we're talking about proportions, right? Now, this is really important because you can actually draw conclusions of this. Not only can you, insurance companies do, and that's why if you are a male driver, especially if you are under twenty-five, you are in the highest risk-taking category, and therefore have the highest insurance premium by a lot, by a lot, okay? All right.